Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about 10 contestant weapons that shocked everyone on Forged in Fire. But before we go on to that, if you end up liking this video, let us know by leaving a like and subscribing. And without any further ado, let's get on to the video. Number 1. The Sika Sword You're first. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. I'm feeling good, yet anxious. I put my all into this blade. I'm just hoping it just takes the head right. Forged in Fire is well known for its bizarre assortment of weapons crafted in many of its episodes, and this short sword definitely belongs. The shape of the sword is quite odd, but works well for piercing through flesh and is one of the most notable features which separates it from many other swords around it. Facts about the long dagger aside, in the episode, the judges test the contestant's weapon, first putting it up against the kill test. Frank's blade goes up first, taking only two strikes against the neck of the dummy to slice through it completely. The head ends up being sliced clean off, making it apparent that the Sika sword is not a weapon to mess with. Demolished this ballistic dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Tony's blade just performs great on this thing. I mean, even though they both will. Number two, the War Golocks. Touches in the handle. The five stars represent the Smiths in the competition. Matt, tell us about your blade. I had a rough time this week. I broke it on. The name alone makes the weapon seem powerful, and when looking at the weapon, it can be quite an odd pair, but the strength of this Filipino machete is what helped it obtain its name. The War Golok is the only sword that ever existed in the Philippines that did not have a pointy tip at the end of it, making it quite unique. When the contestants on Forged in Fire are asked to present a War Golok of their own, they definitely deliver, as both pass the kill test. When the War Goloks were being used, they lacerated through the pig cleanly and one of the War Goloks even left the pig carcass severely damaged and hanging together by a bit of skin. Alright gentlemen, this is my favorite part of this competition. Up first, the kill test. Doug? Number 3. The Horseman Axe But I think it will perform well, and I can't wait to see it happen. Alex? And everything just fell into place for me, even though I had to make some last minute changes. With a name like that, its looks are quite suiting for it. While the name alone is rather intriguing, the way that they're presented and normally made is a factor to consider as well. Most horsemen's axes have a short curved blade at the front which is balanced with a hammer or spike, often called a pick, on the other side of the blade. When the horsemen's axes are put to the kill test, they easily pierce through the skin and puncture through the heart of the dummy, leaving blood behind before disemboweling the dummy and leaving a large slice of the stomach behind. Looking forward to seeing it tear apart some ballistics dummies. All right, gentlemen, up first, the kill test. Doug? The horse. Number four, the hooded Qatar. All right, gentlemen, well, your weapons will now be put through a series of three tests a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. Doug? If you haven't heard what a Qatar is, it's a type of dagger from the Indian subcontinents. It can often be identified by the H-shaped handle it bears. Now imagine putting a cover over the lengths of the handle, and suddenly it becomes a hooded katar. That's what the contestants were asked to make on this episode of Forged in Fire. When the katar is used, it cleanly slices through a pig carcass and leaves behind large lacerations, showing the blade is sharp and deadly. It even pierces through the pig beautifully. Well. First things first, Nicholas, there is a little bit of glinting on the... Number 5. The Glaive Guy's Arm First up, right here on your edge, it picked up a chip. On another side of this, you can feel... The... This weapon closely resembles a Chinese staff sword, also known as a Dao to some, and a Guan Dao, a type of Chinese pole weapon. While being of European descent instead of Chinese, there isn't much information online about the sword, but that it consists of a mix of other sword types. When the Glaive Guy's arm is put up against the test, they're shown to have a razor-sharp edge. One of the weapons even cuts through a deer carcass in half within two slices, leaving the bottom of the deer dangling from the hook and the rest lying on the floor. That was intense. I wasn't ready for that. So to test the strength and durability of your weapons, Number 6. The Wind and Fire Blades I will take your rings and deliver slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. Rebel, you're first. You ready? More than ready. Let's do this. The amount of stress from him hitting that pig, I'm afraid. A ring normally is something that you have placed around your finger or for decoration, but these ring-shaped blades are used in close combat. The Wind and Fire wheels are melee weapons wielded as a pair, and associated with Chinese martial arts such as Baguan Zhang and Tai Chi. 
Once the weapons are presented to the judges on Forged in Fire, they're put up against the kill test. These blades ended up tearing apart the pig carcasses. They rip through the skin and leave the pig torn apart. It will kill. Next stop, the strength test. Dave. Number seven, the Zweihander sword. It's got a lot of weight to it, but obviously it's plenty sharp. This sword's name is quite a mouthful, but it's quite the beautiful blade. The Zweihander sword is a large two-handed sword that was primarily used during the early decades of the 16th century. It's quite a long blade and when put up against the sharpness test, it cuts beautifully. Both swords end up passing the sharpness test, cutting many of the sugarcane poles and leaving considerable damage behind. When put against the kill test, each sword goes through the dummy with ease and disembowels the stomach with one strike. One of the blades ends up hitting the ribs of the dummy on the first strike and completely disembowels the dummy, showing how deadly the weapon is in combat. That was brutal. Okay, Steve, the edge of your sword is sharp enough to last week. Number 9. The Pipe Tomahawk Gentlemen, your weapons will now be put through a series of tests. But up first, the smoke test. Ready? Three. A beautiful weapon when crafted well, the Pipe Tomahawk is just that. A smoking pipe mixed with a tomahawk. Either Native Americans or European Americans, it was adapted from original tomahawks into a mix of the two. On Forged in Fire, the judges put the tomahawks through the smoke test, the kill test, the strength test, and the sharpness test. Funnily enough, they put it through the smoke test, testing out the smoke pipe and finding they work perfectly. Now when they're put up against the kill test, they pierce through the pigs, leaving deep marks in the pigs and slashing through them with ease. Number 9. The Grim Reaper Scythe of humans when it's their time. To test the lethality of your scythe, I will take your scythe and try to rip out the soul of these ballistics dummies. As far as this show's many weapons of choice goes, the, th the thought of seeing a bizarre weapon doesn't surprise us anymore. But when the contestants are asked to present a well-crafted Grim Reaper scythe, it becomes clear that we're in for a real treat. Now to be clear, a scythe is an agricultural hand tool used for mowing grass or for the cutting of crops. While on Forged in Fire, it isn't exactly used for cutting any crops or mowing any grass, they do use the Grim Reaper scythes to cut open realistic human dummies. When used, they go right through the dummies, making sure to show how deadly these weapons can be. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The Grim Reaper uses the scythe to harvest... Number 10. The Zonde Spears This thing is gonna be launched. I'm scared. Spears are probably what you think of when you're trying to describe deadly projectiles. They were used all throughout history and often when fishing. Now for the Zonde Spear, most definitely a weapon of choice. The Zonde Spear consists of an iron spearhead with a rounded tip and narrow blade. The base ends in two long downward pointed barbs with the tips of one broken off. With a description like that, no wonder it was used in the late 1800s. When these spears are used in the kill test, the damage they inflict is deadly. Both spears presented ended up tearing the insides of the dummies apart and showing off how sharp these spears are. They pierce cleanly through the skin of the dummy and rip out parts of the face organs. They tear apart the dummies with ease and show off their deadly nature. That worked really well, Drew. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please let us know by leaving a like and subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.